They grew up just a few houses apart. His father was a very close friend to my father, and we grew up in the same village. No one could have conceived of the unearthly hatred that would shatter their friendship, their families, and their country. German and then Belgian colonialists had traditionally favored the minority Tutsis in Rwanda. The Hutu gained power after Rwanda's independence in 1962. Half the Tutsi population fled, and a government campaign of hatred against them intensified. Extremist radio stations called Tutsis cockroaches and urged their extermination. Finally, the bloodlust exploded. On April 6, 1994, after the death of Rwanda's president in a suspicious plane crash, the government's targeted mass murder of Tutsis and moderate Hutus launched with chilling precision. In a nation of only 7 million people, 800,000 to a million were beaten, shot, and hacked to death with machetes. Six men, women, and children slaughtered every minute of every day for 100 days. Andrew had managed to hide his Tutsi wife, Madreen, but her parents, brothers, and five relatives were butchered in the frenzy. And then came another horrific realization, that Andrew's friend, Calixt, had been among the mob that murdered Madreen's family. He's the man. I hated him, but I hated them and wished they, they all died as well. Andrew reported his old friend, testified against him, saw him convicted and sent to prison. As Rwanda reeled, World Vision responded. World Vision provided emergence to survivors. As well as shelter and safe places for lost or orphaned children. They were very scared. They didn't know what had happened to their parents. How could anyone understand? Where could healing even begin? We discovered that without the peace of heart, without the true trust between the community, without the real cohesion, harmony within the community, uh, nothing works. So World Vision integrated strong healing, peace building, and reconciliation programs into every aspect of its work in Rwanda. That meant working together on projects to re-terrace the land, together Hutu and Tutsi, and regenerating livelihoods side by side, creating opportunities for orphaned young people and health care for everyone, no matter their background. Madreen, who had lost so much, and Marcella, the wife of Calixt, who'd been among Madreen's family's killers, were assigned together as World Vision community volunteers overseeing child sponsorships. During visits with children, we would meet in the neighborhood and those encounters helped us repair our relationship. To rebuild a shattered country, you must rebuild shattered people. World Vision developed a specific model for that that endures today. It's an almost two-week program of sharing intensely personal memories of the genocide, learning new tools to manage deeply painful emotions, and considering a path to forgiveness. This approach was replicated all over the country and embraced by the new government. It was often resisted at first and sometimes took years to change hearts, but has proven transformative. When I say I have forgiven you with a sincere heart, it releases you from the burden and you feel much better. But what about perpetrators like Calixt? I felt so guilty. Trainings during his 12 years in prison had softened his heart. He passed the time crafting guitars and writing songs about his deep remorse. As part of the peace-building program, he did what all perpetrators were encouraged to do. He also came and asked for forgiveness. The Rwandan people have an encyclopedic understanding of forgiveness after their calamity. And here is the heart of it. You can forgive and free yourself, but to reconcile with people who've hurt you requires their participation as well. Only when a perpetrator has honestly confessed and repented and a survivor has chosen forgiveness can they find reconciliation together. 
Over many years, Calixt and Andrew's families learned to trust again, even to go into business together. Today, their children are close friends, like their fathers and grandfathers before them. The mothers care for both families as their own. They are still neighbors, and as close as they were as boys. We have hope for a better future, and we shall get there together. Rwanda has urged all to consider themselves Rwandan. The country has made impressive strides in health, education, and its economy, a remarkable feat just 20 years after a genocide. But it is here, in this small village, where you can most clearly see the lessons of this land in the story of these two men. It is possible for people with such background to forgive and become brothers again. Even after a hatred that threatened to eclipse the sun, it is possible to rediscover humanity, the transcendent power of forgiveness, and always the grace of God. Thank you.